Okay, good evening. Um, I am doing a video tonight, Wednesday, May 27th. And um, so I did a video a few weeks ago regarding um, some of the things that have come out about John McCain. And um, I was, of course, a part of um, helping expose something at, at a military base in Arizona. So um, I'm going to just show some things tonight to prove how crazy this was and how, sorry about the lighting here. And, um, and I want to show some of the threats and things I've gotten that I haven't shown before that just kind of helped prove my point with McCain. And, you know, and if people don't, don't think that this supposed deep state exists, you know, I have evidence right here that I'm going to show tonight. And, um, you know, it might shock some people, um, but, you know, maybe people need to be shocked into, you know, it's because this was, uh, this was, um, this is real and people need to know this is real. And this could have happened to any soldier at any military base. But, you know, this particular incident happened to me because it happened in Arizona where I was a military personnel. So I'm going to show some, 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 uh, of these threats and things that I received from the deep state when they were after me and it has come out that John McCain was the head of the deep state. He was the command. Okay. So, um, that, you know, obviously that's why I had so many problems. You know, I, if I, you know, everybody thought of McCain as some kind of hero, you know, nobody, um, you know, he had an office that people would go to, to try to ask for his help. And here he was a criminal himself. You know, I mean, he was uh, as evil as evil gets. I mean, I, I just, you know, I can't still am trying to wrap my brain around him about the level of treason that went on for 30 years within his office and and the lies. So I'm going to show some some things tonight um, of things that I went through for all these different years. Some of the some of the things I haven't shown. So um, let's see if I can. Shooters. Okay, so uh, this this right here is from the deep state. Hi, crazy Debbie Davis. John is gonna take you down before he dies. Okay, I'm not gonna show the rest of what was on here, but this is these are text messages from my um, phone. Okay, that's from a deep state agent that John McCain sent after me. So hopefully, yeah, that was that was one of the threatening text messages and then um there's more here you know they're gonna take you down this is this is right from my phone they don't care they're gonna take you down these are threatening messages okay and um uh you won't see it coming is what they said it says on here and then um this is me having a conversation with one of the deep state agents trying to figure out who he was. They were, te they were texting me. And I said, why are you watching me? Why are you following me? And stuff like that. And um, he said, I said, why are you following me? I know you're following me. Are you black ops or something? And, um, and then he got mad at me and he says, oh, by the way, there's a surprise for you on your phone. I hope you can accept videos. Johnny, John says there's a surprise for you. I hope you can accept videos. You can see it right there. John, he's referring to John McCain. It's on the bottom there. Okay. Um, I don't know what that was about, but, um, you know, I don't know what that was about. Maybe they were trying to entrap me on something. I don't know what that was about. Okay, but these are these are threats that I had for years on my phone. And um, I also want to go into how many people I tried to help get help from and, and show some of these things. I tried um, reaching out to uh, the Phoenix police multiple times. This is just like three of the cards that I got that I... Um, and their badge numbers and stuff on there. And I, I, but this is like one of like 12 times that I called the Phoenix police with, with these threats that I was getting on my phone. 
and um, they did absolutely nothing, the Phoenix police. And I, I've gotten into, into other videos, I've gotten into issues that I've had with the police and why they are, they're not helping. They're not in, uh, enforcing and helping with different things. And the pol Phoenix police were not any different than the other police situations that I've been through. And they, there's been a lot of um, negligence in the police, you know, and, um, and I'm certainly, like I've said this before, I'm not saying all police are bad. And I know there was a lot of bad things that happened under, with the police under the Obama administration. And, um, and, and I'm not, certainly not saying that all police are bad, but I'm, I am saying that there has been a lot of negligence in this area. Um, it got really bad under the Obama administration with the police and a lot of things need to be cleaned up. And, um, it just, there was a lot of corruption allowed to happen and it, um, made it difficult for some of the good ones that were still there. And it just made it difficult overall, what was allowed to happen from the top down. So, um, I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm trying to get out of this light here. Okay. Um, then I'm going to show some more here. Um, here's me trying to, then I tried to reach out to, uh, Fort Huachuca cause that was, there was a CID unit there and I was saying that, you know, trying to report to them, special agent Lee, I talked to him multiple times and he didn't do anything cause he said it wasn't on an active duty base. You know, I was at, I was at the Arizona national guard when I, um, accidentally started, you know, finding out different things there with, uh, this, this money laundering scandal, you know, they still to this day haven't found that $2.7 million missing. And, you know, so for people who don't know my story, it was, I accidentally uncovered an embezzlement scandal. If you Google, um, Arizona guard embezzlement, $2.7 million, you know, missing. I'm the one who reported that and, um, I got fired wrongfully, uh, wrongfully, um, not promoted you know, and then eventually forced out for no reason on a medical when and there wasn't even anything wrong with me. And I didn't even get any kind of a medical uh, board. I just got forced out. <laughs> You're supposed to go in front of a board, you know, so um, and um, but then before I got out, I was harassed so bad while I was still in that I had to go to the IG's office and I tried getting a restraining order against some people in my own command because they made my life such living hell. So this is like correspondence between me and the IG's office. You know, this is my third request. This is to Captain Communis, who was the, um, <clears throat> and Michael Mahoney, who were the IG at the time. And then I also CC'd the National Guard Bureau. Uh, Michael Green at the National Guard Bureau. Not one single person helped me. And I'm sitting here saying, um, I'm afraid for my life working at this base. You know, it's right here in the correspondence. You know, um, I, this is my third request for a restraining order. You know, um, these are the kind of things that, that happen at military bases under this, under the Obama administration. And, you know, there's all these Obama gate stories and, and things coming out now and this is just one of many you know um one of many what was allowed to happen um then i um then there's more uh that happened under obama too that i wanted to mention uh there was something called an army board of corrections where i, ha I also had a pay issue and um it was from when i was on the border mission where well, we were, um, I was, one of my things that I did in the Arizona Guard was we were part of building the fence for about a year and a half. And when the original fence was going up and, um, I was on a certain active duty, uh, title 32 order down there. And, um, it was kind of weird, the pay and, uh, the Na Arizona National Guard coded my pay incorrectly. And so for like a year and a half, I got paid incorrectly and um, when I got back to Minnesota, I went and spoke to the uh, the USPFO finance office at Camp Ripley, and I said, you know, I believe I got paid incorrectly. It was, you know, and I and they c conferred 
the after looking at my orders and after looking at my pay and stuff like that, that that yeah sure enough i didn't get all kinds of stuff i didn't get uh the per diem i should have gotten and i should i didn't get travel pay that i should have gotten and things like that so they wrote something up for me and then i um we tried submitting it through dfas or something and then they said it was too many years later so then i, I had to go through the army board of corrections so, um, and, and I was, you know, this was, this was, I wasn't the only one that had pay issues or something and things like that. There was all kinds of people that had different types of issues under Obama where you couldn't, you either you didn't get promoted or you got passed over or you had a pay issue, you couldn't get resolved. I mean, there was like thousands of those type of stories. Okay. So this is my correspondence with the army board of corrections, you know, for, at the Pentagon, of um where i finally submitted uh i submitted my pay issue and it was already signed by um a certified accountant from the uspfo office these are all of my correspondence and emails like it took like i I'd still never got paid um it was course by I corresponded with the army board of corrections for three years and um trying to get all they had to do was pay me, the USPFO office um, in Minnesota did the paperwork for me and and they um, and all they would have had to do was pay me. They refused to pay me. And um, then she even admitted, then I got so mad that I tried reporting, I tried reporting the Army Board of Corrections office to the um, our, the criminal investigation division in Virginia, uh, Jonathan Parker, and and this is a correspondence with him. And I said, you know, myself and others, we have, we haven't. I mean, we've been waiting for years to get responses from the Army Board of Corrections, and um, I was saw other complaints online that I forwarded him about other people complaining, and so I asked him to look to look into it, and then she writes me back and says um and and says well uh we only have three people assigned to this office okay so there's three people assigned to an office army board of corrections and um they admitted to me on several occasions that they have they have 24,000 cases ahead of me so I'm thinking, oh, there's a whole group of, there's a whole floor of people working that many cases. And then she, and then when I started getting on her case, she admitted to me that, I'm sorry, there's only three of us. Okay, so this is, you know, one of many things uh, that were infuriating under this administration that I think people need to know about. And, um, you know, and people wonder uh, why there might be this Obamagate investigations. There's several investigations. There's that weapons scandal that nobody has ever, that hardly anybody has brought up, uh, where the weapons disappeared um, under Obama. I mean, there's a lot of different things that um, were horrible. And um, so I wanted to, so if anybody has any kind of, um, you know, they, like they, they think that, you know, that this is some kind of exaggeration or if they think it wasn't as serious with McCain or, you know, if I'm making something up, you know, I have all the evidence right here of all the harassment that I've gotten that I had for years of by McCain's deep state agents because he was deep state. He was a deep, the, the deep state commander. And um, I also wanted to share... <laughs> you know, this is just horrible what I had to go through and I wouldn't wish this upon any soldier. No soldier would have, should have had to go through this. And I finally started a, um, GoFundMe account, um, uh, for myself and also, also for other people who've contacted me, it's like a GoFundMe account for whistleblowers or other targeted individuals or other, other soldiers that have had issues like I have had where, you know, you've been waiting for like years to get proper pay, pay, um, or, um, you know, I basically, I started this fund for, 
finally, because I don't think it's wrong to ask for help. And I don't think, I've been through living hell, and I don't think it's wrong for any soldier to feel bad about asking for help, because it was really bad under this last, under Obama. And it was, you know, and I, a lot of people went through things and they don't want to talk about it and they aren't talking about it. They're afraid or they, it's, you know, so, um, I don't have a problem asking for help. So I finally started a GoFundMe account and, um, I would really appreciate any help. It's, um, in my case, I got wrongfully kicked out of the military. So I'm trying to get a lawyer to help me, you know, with my case and, um, <clears throat> so I can get, I mean, I was wrongfully fired and wrongfully kicked out, you know, so, and I mean, I'm owed all kinds of money. Plus I'm supposed to get a whistleblower reward for what I helped uncover. I mean, you know, this is just, you know, but I, I would need a lawyer for that. So I'm trying to get a lawyer for that. And I'm, I'm also, I was just, I mean, it, it affected my personal life for so many years and I got wrongfully pulled over so many times and that costed money. So <coughs> I started a fund. And if people feel led to help, I would certainly appreciate it. And um, I also wanted to um, read some comments that I've gotten lately from some of the the videos that I did regarding some of the police incidences. Like when I was trying to report my sheriff in South Dakota. Um, and, why, you know, why is it so hard to get rid of a sheriff? You know, I was like, you know, because I still to this day, you know, we're still dealing you know, it's just some of these sheriffs and police officers, it's almost, it's almost impossible to get rid of them, it seems. And so this guy writes in to me um, and says, uh, one of them said, uh, Debbie, it's the same thing everywhere across America. Um, anytime you try to complain, you get a total runaround. So that's the way it's been. I'm not saying it's that way under, under Trump. Um, I'm just saying that's the way it's been. <laughs> in the past. And, um, you know, hopefully those things will start changing. Um, I'm not, I'm not, a, a, a against the, the law enforcement, you know, I'm, but I'm, a, but there hasn't been proper, um, checks and balances or ways to there. So what, one of the problems is the police have immunities and they've had all these immunities for years. So they could do something wrong and you can't go after them because they have immunities. So these type of laws, in my opinion, need to change because there are some police, some bad police officers, and you need to be able to have recourse over those type of bad police officers. You know, they need to be held accountable. Otherwise, they'll do it to somebody else. So uh, this other guy that wrote in to me had been a police officer for 18 years, and he was seeing some of my videos about the police issues that I've had. And uh, he said, you can try getting a state representative to draft something called a recall or a referendum. And if you prove that there's, or you can, if you can prove that there's a wrongdoing by the police officer, you can try to get to them impeached. Um, you know, it depends on how the state writes the laws, apparently where you're in. Um, so if you can prove that they broke the law, that would be considered dereliction of their duty and they're supposed to be subject to impeachment. Um, it requires that a large percentage of, uh, of voting population of the county uh, file a petition and then the petition is sent to the state level ethics commission, attorney general, governor, and they supposedly uh, will they are supposed to take it before our committee but unfortunately in his um experience um a lot of times it's lost or abandoned forgotten destroyed okay um this uh this is so apparently you know this is the way it's it's been he said um, for many years. And he said, as far as I know, it's been this way for like 120 years. Okay. So this is what this guy said. So, um, I don't know, but I've been personally writing into certain things, um, 
write to the DOJ. There's an email that I found at civil.feedback at usdoj.gov and um, reporting some issues that I've had. Um, and, you know, it's a huge problem and apparently it's been this way for 120 years. So I'm sure it's gonna take a while to fix. And, um, you know, it's certainly not all law enforcement. It's just an issue overall that's where there isn't enough checks and balances in that system, in my opinion. And, um, and there's too many immunities so um, it's gonna take a while for things to to change there. But I wanted to share these uh, some of these these um, things that I shared tonight to, to just show evidence of um, you know that the deep state does exist. Of course it does. Of course this harassment was real that I went through, and uh, what came out about John McCain is true and what a traitor he was and how corrupt he was and how terrifying he was you know evidence is right here and 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 you know i think that people in arizona knew this for a long time i just think they were afraid uh to say something for many years and apparently you know went just went on for a really long time and so thank god he is um he is uh no longer here and that he's been removed and um you know and he, he and, and that there's a new that there is no longer this uh deep state command he's no longer the head of the deep state command and there's not there's the, the deep state is being dismantled um it's slowly and it's it's not just within our country but all over the world so it's like a huge ordeal here that's happening and um you know it's been a force of evil all over the world so i mean we should be thankful for that but there's still a lot of things that need to be addressed you know like with these police and things so okay so i just wanted to do this video tonight okay and um and if you can help with this fund it would be certainly greatly appreciated um and i'm going to start doing more videos here Thank you. God bless.